Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Today, I welcome the show's first franchise owner, and I must admit, this is an area of business I do not know much of, so I did some research. By definition, a franchise or franchising is a method of distributing products or services involving a franchiser who establishes the brand's trademark or trade name and business system and a franchisee who pays a royalty and often an initial fee for the right to do business under the franchisor's name and system. Let me break it down. The simplest example I can give is McDonald's, and quite possibly one of the more historic franchises that lives today. Without going too deep into the history of the Golden Arches, McDonald's opened its first franchise store in April 15, 1955 in Des Plaines, Illinois, and the rest was history. So how does this all work? In the simplest way I can explain it, for a fee and ongoing royalties to the franchisor, or in this case McDonald's, is granting the franchisee, the entrepreneur, the right to use the trademark, the golden arches baby, ongoing support from the corporate office, and the system of doing business to sell the service or product, the secret sauce. But is it worth it? Well, here are a few things to take into consideration. It is much easier to get funded. The franchise will help with the red tape and help address some issues that unexpectedly arise. These franchises want the entrepreneur to succeed, which includes providing the entrepreneur with discounted marketing materials and expert brand builders at the franchise level. It's like having a professional coach. Another consideration is there can be a smaller amount of risk involved in starting a franchise simply because of the brand power. Think about it. If a business is at a franchise model, it's because the company has created a brand worth franchising. McDonald's, 7-Eleven, Great Clips, to name a few. Not everyone has the brand power to establish franchise models throughout the country. And I'm not saying the above brands are stellar. However, they are recognizable brands. There is no need to reinvent the wheel. The system is tried and true. Another great option if going the franchise route is the network of information of past and current franchise owners. One of the things most entrepreneurs on the show discuss is the feeling of loneliness because what they are doing is so novel and new that there are not many people who can relate to what they are going through. However, in a franchise model, there are other entrepreneurs running the same business in different neighborhoods who are willing to lend advice. Take advantage of that network. Last but certainly not least is the training. This cannot be overstated enough. And I, for one, see this as a huge advantage to franchising is the training that comes from the franchisor to ensure the entrepreneur succeeds at this venture. The franchisor wants the entrepreneur to succeed and they are willing to invest in the entrepreneur to ensure the business is successful by providing education and training in major areas of business, financing, economics, logistics, strategy, you name it. And not just education to start the business, but continue training to help the business and the entrepreneur grow. Now, there are some disadvantages to franchising, such as high initiation costs, less control, limited creativity, and such, and it may not be for everyone. But the franchise model has been proven to stand the test of time, and there are certainly more advantages than simply stated above, and disadvantages too. If a franchise model is of interest, I would highly recommend taking some time to explore the pros and cons, including privacy and shared information. It is critical to understand the franchise agreement in full and do due diligence to understand ongoing costs and support as each franchise model is different. Remember, even proven models do not guarantee that the business will work in a certain area. An outdoor exercise class may not work in Oregon's winter months. Or it might. Honestly, Oregon is weird. So, get out there. Explore some weird ideas. Follow some unbeaten path. Whatever it is you do, like a franchiser, know that the Shades of Entrepreneurship is here to support you. This podcast was edited by Modern Ally, the business for small businesses and nonprofits who want their graphic design, marketing, social media, video, and other media projects done right. Modern Ally has a passion for supporting community education and social rights. The best part, Modern Ally meets businesses where they're at and works to create custom packages and services that fit your business needs at your budget. Say goodbye to overpriced, impersonal, and out-of-touch agencies and say hello to your newest ally. To get started, visit yourmodernally.com or you can follow Modern Ally on Facebook or Instagram. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy the episode. Welcome to 
through the shades of entrepreneurship, where we interview entrepreneurs to inspire the future entrepreneur. I'll be your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. So grab a drink, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. My next guest was born and raised in Oregon and attended the University of Washington State before joining the family business. After selling the business and being a 15-time marathon finisher, a new direction was forged. Please welcome the owner of Lake Oswego and Progress Ridge Stretch Lab, Adam Havens. Today, I have the owner of Stretch Lab. Adam, what's going on, buddy? How are we doing this morning? Oh, man, I'm excited because I'm, I need to get stretched out. I mean, I'm, I'm tight. So we are here for you. Yes. So let's let's talk about this. So first, let's uh, let's introduce yourself. Give us a little bio. Let's uh, kind of introduce the world to Adam. OK, well, my name is Adam Havens. I'm the owner of Stretch Lab Studios in both Beaverton and in Lake Oswego. I have plans to open two more locations, probably sometime in 2022 on the west side of Portland. I grew up here in Lake Oswego, and so I'm a, I'm a Oregonian, left for a few years, went to college up in Seattle and at University of Washington, and I've been back in Portland since 1999, and uh, I spent most of my career working for our family business, which was, was a company called Rada Paint Company. Mm, we yeah. were a paint manufacturing company, and and uh, we actually sold that quite a few years ago, and and uh, so I left that industry just a few years back, and uh, I sold some computer servers for a little while and realized that wasn't my cup of tea, <laughs> and so I wanted to find a path for me to move into self-employment and uh, a business owner, and that's what eventually led me to Stretch Lab. And Stretch Lab is a one-on-one -on -one assisted stretching studio. So you come in, you lay down on a padded stretching table, and one of our flexologists stretches you out for either 25 or 50-minute sessions. And so we can assist with your flexibility, your mobility, and your range of motion. So what, what took you up to Seattle? College. Was accepted into the University of Washington. And once I got that acceptance letter, I packed my bags nice. and headed up north. What'd you study up there? Business. Nice. Yes. Nice. So did you come back to uh, work for the family business? Yes. How did that kind of transition from college going to the family business? Were you focusing on the family business when you went to college or would you just like, I want to do business? At that time, I did not have the intention on working for the family business. It yeah. just ended up working out that way. So what did you learn from that that kind of helped you with Stretch Lab? I guess it, it developed my entre entrepreneurial spirit to a point. It made me want to be a self-sufficient small business owner. Nice. And so giving me the motivation for that. But I, I think it was more things in my personal life that led me to Stretch Lab more than my, my experience with my family business. What was those? Back in the mid 2000s, I was uh, I wasn't making the best life choices. I was there was some stressful things going on in, in my life, both personally and professionally. And I was about 50 pounds uh, heavier than I am now. And I went out and bought a pair of running shoes, started running and I ran hood to coast that summer. Oh, and wow. Ran my first marathon following year. I'm now up to number 15. Wow. I've always appreciated and knew what stretching can do for you from both a recovery and a performance standpoint. I spent a lot of quality time with my foam roller. And uh, when I heard of one-on-one -on -one assisted stretching concept, it really piqued my interest. And so I started doing a lot of research companies all over the country that were offering uh, this kind of service. There was both independent companies as well as franchisors that were offering these kind of studios. And I did a lot of research and ended up flying down to Irvine, California and meeting with uh, the Stretch Lab Brass. I love their support staff and their business plan. So I signed a franchise agreement with them to, to bring nice. four locations here to the Portland area. So you kind of, the problem you kind of went out and solved was the soreness after running. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Let's get a little bit more in detail. What What is exactly like a client goes in there? What can they expect? They could expect to be asked a lot of questions about their, their health history and uh, what they tend to achieve by coming to Stretch Lab. And so our biggest challenge is finding their why. Every client that we have is there for a different reason. It's part of the reason why I actually got into Stretch Lab. I looked at other boutique fitness franchises and some of their marketing was so narrowly defined by age group and yeah. or gender. I wanted something with a much broader appeal. And I found that with Stretch Lab just because I can look at our existing membership base and we have members from 12 years old all the way up to 85 years old and oh, every wow. size and shape of person in between. And so everybody that comes in the door, we ask them, have you ever had an assisted stretch before? 
what past injuries or surgeries have you had? What do you do for phys- fitness and or activity? Mm-hmm. And what are your least flexible areas? And then also what their goals are by coming into our studio. And then after we get them on the table, we go through a full 50 minute session with them. And then our certified flexologist will make a membership package recommendation to them at the end of the session. And let's say that a prospect comes in saying they they want to run a half marathon in, in 60 days. We'll say, okay, well, that's a pretty aggressive plan. I would recommend probably two visits a week with us gotcha. to get you to that goal. Gotcha. Uh, other people, you know, we can just see once a week right. and uh, we can get everything done that they need to achieve their health and wellness goals. Yeah. You know, one of the things you mentioned, you went down to California, Irvine, and, and you met with the team and you decided to go the franchise route. Why? Why did you go the franchise route? Just because they kind of already established brand kind of thing. And you're very mentioned the business model. Let's, let's kind of talk about that, though, the franchise piece of it. Why did you go that way? I looked at the alternative, which is creating my own concept, and I would have to, you know, do all the branding, come up with all the marketing materials, yeah. uh, the, you know, the business plan itself. I would have had to partner with a, uh, a medical professional yeah. to put together the entire stretch r- routines that we do, our entire training program. And I looked at that as being about a three-year process. Gotcha. And so I looked at this and our parent company is a company called Exponential Fitness and they actually own nine different boutique fitness franchise concepts. Mm, okay. And so they, they already had plenty of experience putting together the business plans, the promotional and marketing aspects of it. So everything was kind of served to you on a platter right then and there. And so I looked at other franchisors in the East Coast and in the South and and I decided far and away that Stretch Lab was the one for me. Yeah. And I think that's an important thing for the listeners to know. You know, we have so many variations of businesses, right? LLC, S Corp, C Corp, so on and so forth. But franchise is also another option. I think even myself, I seldom forget to think about that as yeah. an option for business, right? Now, is this your first company you've owned? Yes, it absolutely is. And so what was kind of your thinking, your thought process when you you mentioned you kind of did your research and stuff? What, what were kind of like your, what was your risk corridor? What are you kind of thinking about? Like, you know what? I need to be within this line for it to work. Well, I was just sold on the concept of it. And uh, I ended up buying the rights to four franchises just because I believe so much in the concept yeah. and its long-term potential. Now, my my intention is to get all four of these studios up and uh, operational and obviously cash flow positive. And then at some point, I'll look at selling them. And that's actually the reason why I set, set up every studio that I've opened as a separate LLC, mm. uh, just so I can I can have that flexibility of, of saying, okay, if maybe a Nike g- g- exec that's a member of one of our studios retires and said, Hey, you know, I'm looking for an investment opportunity. You know, have you ever thought about selling any of your stretch labs? Well, then I could say, yes. You know, how many are you interested in? Uh, If you're just interested in this one, then it's easy to do that sale when it's a separate LLC. Yeah. And so why, why did you decide to go that route to create four different LLCs? Just so I wouldn't have to sell the entire blob and all at once. If I wanted to sell two and keep two on, you know, in my back pocket for myself, I wanted that option. And so it was more for the, the long-term flexibility. Gotcha. So I'm not, I must admit, I'm not too familiar with the franchise model. So can you kind of explain it a little bit and like, how does it work from a, from a business perspective? You know, you, you go in, do you, you obviously have to have capital, mm-hmm. correct? Um, how much capital is it? 10%, 20%. So that's the listeners that if they're interested in doing the franchise model, what are some of the things they should expect? There's the franchise fee and uh, that's based on, on the number of territory rights that you purchase. And so if you just buy the, the, the rights to one territory, uh, I believe currently it's $60,000 franchise fee for that. And then uh, they give you a price break if you buy three or more and then six or more. The price goes, you know, you say 15 and then 25% if you, the more territories you buy. What has been so far the difficult piece about starting this business? COVID probably was the biggest Mm, wrench thrown in with us. And uh, it was very, it was absolutely devastating to our business because we're a service industry. We're in very close contact with people. You know, when we're stretching people, oftentimes our flexologist is a foot away from our clients, if if not less, and they're touching them and their hands are on them. And a lot of people, the the fear of COVID just, they didn't want to come back to the studio right when we reopened last June. And so Mm. um, trying to get people members back in the studio was probably the most difficult thing that we dealt with in the last year. And so each of our studios lost about 50 to 55% of our, our membership wow. base when we, wow. when we uh, had to close due to COVID. And, and so we've just been clawing our way back and, and we're finally to a point where both of my studios are cash flow positive w- without government assistance. Oh yeah. And, yeah. uh, and we're, we're, we're steadily seeing some steady growth of both of those studios now, which is finally, uh, 
it took a long time to get to this point and uh we had to be very patient and very diligent and it was a lot of hard work uh a lot of a lot of member and customer outreach and uh all of our marketing is all very very grassroots pay- based so mm-hmm. it's uh partnering with community partners other fitness mm-hmm. studios nice. uh, local golf courses uh retirement homes mm-hmm. uh you know we've even had you know wineries uh, have us come out and, and we offer offer 50 minute uh, demo stretches when their members come and pick up their wine shipments. Yeah. That's, uh, you know, that's such a great model. Fall. And so we do what we call promotional pop-ups all over the place, mm-hmm. uh, you know, at golf tournaments, things like that and health fairs, uh, farmers markets, things like that. And so we get out there and we'll take a, our big stretch lab tent and a couple of massage tables and two of our, our flexologists and uh, we'll just go out and offer free 15 minute demo stretches. And so people can try it out and, and see what they think. And then we, we bring them in for a an introductory stretch and, and see what we can do to improve their lives. That is, that is really cool. I really like that model. The, uh, you know, going out to the consumers and meeting them at various locations, as you mentioned, you know, the golf course or the wineries, because that really kind of helps accentuate the brand and, and locations that they may not have a physical space in. You know, and those pop-up ideas is, is so, so innovative. You know, one of the things you've kind of been discussing is is how you've built your brand. Did the franchise kind of give you guys some some help in building it? Or you mentioned so far the marketing has pretty been grassroots. Is it kind of on yourself to to build the brand oh, here in Oregon? Absolutely. They, they help provide a roadmap and a, mm-hmm. a plan to go about, about and do that. So we actually, we have what, what we call a pre-sale phase. Uh, so before our studio even opened, uh, when we were still Work building out our studios. Mm-hmm. We actually had already had a full team of flexologists already hired, and we were out doing these community pop ups just to try to build up our membership base. So we had 100, 120 members by the time we opened the studio. So we by the time we opened, we already had a re- had a revenue stream gotcha. flowing in. Now we just continue to keep doing these promotional pop ups just to keep new members and and new blood coming into the studio. What tactic, like what marketing or branding tactic have you felt has been the most um, successful? I I would say our promotional pop-ups are are huge for us. Um, Our existing member referrals are huge for us. Mm. Um, And then we actually do spend quite a bit of money uh, on a monthly basis on digital advertising through Facebook, Instagram, and Google. And so all those leads... You know, somebody will click on a Facebook ad and and it'll capture their mobile number, their email address and their name, and it'll just pop up in our studio's uh, email inbox. Nice. And then we just reach out to them at that point and we'll call them up and say, hey, we'd love to get you in for a $49 introductory stretch and see what we can do to help you. You hear that, folks at home? $49 introductory stretch right there, right? Little little plug. Now, what was there like a like a moment in Stretch Lab where you felt like, you know what, this is going to be successful? Or did you felt like it was during the pitch with the franchise team that you kind of felt, you know what, this is going to be successful business plan? Well, I was sold on it after I, I met with the brass at Stretch Lab. And that's another thing that I actually really appreciate about being part of a franchise is all the other, other franchise owners mm, you can rely yeah. on. It's like a network. Uh, yes, exactly. We do, you know, Stretch Lab corporate does about five or six monthly webinars or conference calls where we share ideas and talk about you know, sales up to that point in the month and and goals for the remainder of the month and things like that. Then we'll actually also do private conference calls with uh, other stretch lab owners all across the country where Mm. we'll share uh, best practices, how to deal with the current job market situation. We're all having a hell of a time sourcing uh, new employees. So uh, that's not just a thing here in Oregon. It's, it's every stretch lab owner across the entire country is having a hard time with that. And so just finding new candidates has been very difficult for all of us. Is it some difficulty in regards to finding just bodies or do you have like a specific need to fill? We have a specific need to fill. So, I mean, that's where, that's what makes stretch lab successful is the education of our flexologist. Um, they are certified flexologists. They put in a ton of training when we hire somebody, we, we take somebody with uh, a, an instructional instructional background like yoga instructors, Pilates instructors, dance, dance instructors. We'll interview massage therapists, mm. chiropractic assistants, personal trainers. Gotcha. Um, and they have to have at least a couple of years of, of experience mm-hmm. doing that. And then so they have to do uh, basically about 20 hours of online training. That's basically the, the theory behind everything that we do. And then they have to go through two full days of hands-on training mm-hmm. uh, through our corporate office where they learn all the, te- the technical aspects of our stretches. And then they're, 
they have to do approximately 20 hours of practice sessions on existing clients or employees uh, before they're allowed to, to start stretching our members in the studio. Oh, wow. And so, uh, yeah, our education department is absolutely wonderful at Stretch Lab, and, and it's a very well put together training program, and they're the magic behind Stretch Lab. Yeah. Or flexologist. Yeah, it sounds like it. So the flexologist, mm-hmm. right? That's that's something you guys created, right? Yeah, that's a that's a term we uh, we came up with, and and we love the name. And it's cool. And, uh, I like it. Yeah, all all the employees love having that that moniker on the yeah. back of their shirts. And and so interesting enough, you know, you, you're mentioning the folks you kind of recruit are from various industries, right? The rehab mm-hmm. industry, the massage therapist industry, chiropractor industry. How would you say? you know, the stretch lab kind of differs from some of those industries or maybe similarities. That's what's great is uh, when you have people with backgrounds from all these different modalities, they bring different things to, to the table. Right. And so they're great about sharing ideas or they'll just say, Hey, I noticed how you were doing this stretch on Henry on his back left shoulder. You know, here, I think if, if we do a little bit of an alteration, you'll be able to get a more effective of a stretch. Oh, and interesting. It'll, it'll be less, it'll be less stress on your body from a posture and, uh, and positional standpoint. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're constantly trying to make life easier on our flexologists because it's, it's a fairly strenuous job. Gotcha. And so if we can alter some stretches and, and make it less work for them, then, then we're going to try to do that. And so it's great uh, bringing all these different modalities together and letting them feed off each other. Yeah, that's, that's very interesting. Cause I, um, you know, one of the things you mentioned is the network of, of franchisees that you have, but the, now it's also a network of these flexologists, right. Mm-hmm. And they're kind of sharing their best practices because this is pretty new and novel, right? How yep. long has stretch lab uh, been around? So for, uh, stretch lab was founded back in 2015 by a personal trainer and, uh, one of his clients and he would always manually stretch out his client the last five or 10 minutes of each personal training session. Mm. And he mentioned one day, he said, yeah, you know what, gosh, I actually, this is always my favorite part of the session. I wish I could just book a, a whole hour where you just stretch me out. And they're like, huh, you know, what? we might yeah. be onto something here. So, uh, they actually opened up studios in, in, uh, Venice and Santa Monica, uh, back in 2015. And then in 2018, our parent company purchased stretch lab and decided to franchise it nationwide. And so in, the fall of 2018, there were three stretch labs, uh, franchises that opened in all of 2018. And, uh, as of last week, we've, we now have 137 oh, wow. stretch labs open nationwide. So our growth has been absolutely exponential. Yeah. That, that's kind of popped pretty quick, huh? Very much so. And so you mentioned, um, in regards to the region and territories from the franchise, do you, do you own Oregon? No, uh, I just own basically just the west side of Portland. So gotcha. how about the territory rights to four locations and, and they, they base their territories off population, zip codes, things like that. And so yeah. um, there is there's also another stretch lab owner here in Portland that has a couple studios in the downtown area. Gotcha. And then I have the rights to uh, up to four locations here on the, on the west side of Portland. Nice. nice. So where, where did all of this entrepreneurial spirit come from? Well, with Stretch Lab, it was um, something I wanted to find something that I could be passionate about. Mm-hmm. And uh, with my experience with running marathons and, and things like that, and my my love of, of stretching and movement and taking care of yourself and cr- trying to create a, a better you, mm-hmm. the concept of Stretch Lab just wove very well with what I wanted to do. Yeah. And so uh, this was something I could be passionate about. And the fact that I can just stand there in my studio and see every member or client get up off the table with a big smile on their face yeah. and race up to the counter to, to book their next appointment. Uh, that that's the reward in that's itself right there. Yeah. That's so, a great feeling. So, you know, and I, I get emails and letters from our members, uh, saying how much they love stretch lab and how much it's improved their lives. And, you know, whether it's a golfer that's worked on their range of motion and all of a sudden their, you know, their handicap's gone down by a couple strokes and they're, Oh man, I definitely need to get a stretch. (laughs) Yeah. And you know, then then they say, you know, Hey, I'm hitting the ball 15 yards further than I was a year ago now. And so, and then we have others, um, you know, we actually have a lot of diabetics and, uh, uh, people with MS that come in here for basically medical reasons. Um, we're not a medical facility, but 
you know, they'll go to a physical therapist, they'll go to a massage therapist, and they'll come to Stretch Lab. And oftentimes they'll tell us that they get more functional benefit from the services they get at Stretch Lab than they do from a, a massage or their physical therapy sessions. And so, uh, but a lot of these, these people, uh, these members with MS and things like that come in I mean, for mainly joint pain relief yeah. and increased blood flow. And so it just increases their quality of life. They, they were more relaxed th- through the remainder of the, the day after their stretch. They sleep better that night. They feel more refreshed the next morning when they wake up yeah. and they can't wait to get in for the next appointment. Yeah. I never really thought about the, you know, the extended benefits beyond, you know, I'm just thinking just, you know, from the athletic perspective, mm-hmm. but yeah, you know, I got one of my best friend, he has muscular dystrophy, you know, yeah. and, and you know, that, I think this would be very beneficial to him and getting him stretched out. And I know my brother, you know, he is a diabetic. Sometimes our movement and his movement is a little bit different due to being, um, having a prosthesis, you know? And, and, and so I think that is a very good point, you know, to be able to look beyond that. Or have you been able to market to that community as well? Or have you been focusing just on the running community in your marketing and branding? Oh yeah. Well, we work a lot with, uh, with physical therapists. Okay. Um, so they'll make recommendations to their, their clients. And one of the biggest frustrations with a physical therapist is they'll get a new client referred to them by a doctor, mm-hmm. uh, on, on that first appointment, they'll say, all right, well, here's three stretches I need you to do morning and at night. Right. And we'll book another appointment for you seven days from now and see where you're at. And then they come back a week later. Oh, Hey, how are your stretches going? Well, you know, I did them that first day, but they're really boring and yeah. I haven't done them since. It's like, okay, well, your doctor's going to get mad at you when you ask for more referrals for more PT sessions. If you're not going to do, do the work necessary to get you to meet your the goals we discussed with your doctor, then you know, you're, you're wasting your time. So yeah. I suggest you go see Adam down at stretch lab. Uh, I would see him at least once a week for the time being. And gotcha. uh, that's, that's going to be the best way to get you where we need you to go. Yeah. Cause a lot of the physical therapy stuff is like homework, right? Mm-hmm. You have to go yeah. home and do this for the yeah. hour. And you are like, you're going to stretch me out for the hour. Yeah. I mean, people nice. just come in and they, they just lay on their backs, close their eyes. And sometimes they don't even say a word. They just breathe deeply into every yeah. stretch. And, and, uh, you know, other, other people can get a little more chatty and, and want to ask <laughs> advice. And, and we're, we're happy to provide homework for them. Totally. Um, you know, they say, Hey, you know, what's a stretch I can do for my IT band? Yeah. On my right side that gives me issues. And we'll say, all right, well, here, just take a stretching strap, lay it flat on your back, and, and here's how you would there you go. Uh, stretch that out. And, and so we give them pointers on, on that and, nice. and let them do their own self-care. And it's pretty minimal equipment, right? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we basically just have our the flexologist is our, our main tool. And yeah. we, we do use a, a hyper ice, the hypervolt guns. Um, you know, if we're stretching out a person and we find a big knot in their hamstring, right. we'll, we'll take a hypervolt gun, do it for 60 to 90 seconds just to kind of loosen that up in order to stretch it. And what, what, what exactly does that do? It's a percussive massage gun um, that basically will take a knot in your hamstring or uh, in your lower back and and loosen that up in in order for us to get a deeper stretch into it. Nice. So looking back on everything, you know, looking back on school, looking back on painting, looking back on the start of of Stretch Lab, would you change anything? Would you do anything different? I would have waited till post-COVID to... (laughs) to sign my franchise agreement and open these studios, but uh, no... uh, Everything was great doing the pre-sale phase. I, I really enjoyed working with all my contractors on the build out of the studio and then basically just all the grassroots marketing that was necessary to, yeah. to get the studio up and up and running originally. And so I made tons of great connections uh, through that. And, and uh, now I've, you know, I have general managers of both studios now that, nice. that do a, a lot of the work that I was originally doing during the pre-sale phase. And so it's, it's nice to be able to take a step back and, enjoy being a business owner. Yeah. You know, and it's kind of funny. I think, uh, people misconstrue, you know, when you start a business, it's just kind of, all right, now it's revenue time, but there is a point I'm, I'm dealing with it now, right. A point where you're not making a revenue. Yeah. (laughs) You know, no. did, did it take a while for you to kind of get to that point? Oh, yes. No, it, it, it took a lot of patience and uh, some sleepless nights uh, <laughs> getting to that to that point. Um, so that that was that was a stressful and, and you know, dealing with negative cash flow issues was yeah. was not a, a, a fun thing. No, definitely not <laughs> to wake up to every day. And it's rough. So it's uh, now that we finally turned the corner and we're seeing some some really good growth of both, both yeah. of our studios. It, it, it's been a bit of a, a sigh of relief for me. No, nice. no question about it. So what, what advice would you have, you know, for young entrepreneurs, including myself and, and all of our listeners at home, or maybe, you know, a younger self, uh, a younger Adam, what advice would you have? I would say it's always going to be harder than you think. Mm. 
whether it's doing your due diligence, researching your franchises, getting your financing, yeah. all all those ducks in a row, everything like that. It's always it's always going to be harder. And uh, I mean, every day I never make it to the end of my to do list as a yeah. business business owner. It's just it's always there. There's always something on my to do list. Every got day. a list behind me. Yeah, every day when I <laughs> when I stop working at six or seven o'clock at night, there's still plenty of yeah. things on my to do list, and and there always will be. I I see you've got the whiteboard on the on, <laughs> on the wall there, and I I, I keep notes on those. And I also, uh, use a dry erase pen on my, on my yeah. windows in my condo, just to write things down when I'm in a conference call or a meeting. And I, I will agree. I have, I have, I have three different notebooks. I have a whiteboard for those folks that cannot see it. I, I do in fact have a whiteboard with a to-do list on it <laughs> that I am in fact working through. So Adam, for the folks at home that want to get stretched out, where, where are your locations? How can they find you on social media? How can they get in contact with you? Uh, so our stretch lab Lake Oswego is on second and a right in downtown Lake Oswego. Nice. We're, we're in the same building as salt and straw ice cream, mm. uh, bamboo sushi, star cycle, spinning studio. Uh, we just had a breakside brewery tap room just oh, nice. there a couple weeks ago. And, uh, so yeah, we're in a great community there with very vibrant downtown core. Nice. Um, you know, there's a, the farmer's market right at Millennium Park, a block down the street from us every Saturday for most of the year. And so, yeah, we're at 395 Second Street in downtown Lake Oswego. Perfect. Um, and we've been open for just a little over two years at that location. And then Stretch Lab Progress Ridge is in Prog- Progress Ridge Town Square, uh, which is just about a few miles west of 217 in Beaverton. Right next to, there's a movie theater in Big, Big Al's uh, Bowling Alley. And then we have a New Seasons in our in our shopping center as well. And, nice. And so, yeah, we're open uh, Monday through Saturday. You can find us at either Stretch Lab Lake Oswego or Stretch Lab Progress Ridge on social media, Facebook, Instagram. You can just go to stretchlab.com and you can actually book sessions at either studio. Through, nice. And do your, do your team have social media channels as well? Team members? Your, your no. location. Sorry, your locations. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. yes. Perfect. So how do we find them on Instagram? Uh, just type in Stretch Lab Lake Oswego. Or Perfect. Stre- or Stretch Lab Progress Ridge and then Stretch Lab Lake Oswego. Nice. Adam Havens, the studio owner of Stretch Lab. Thank you so much for joining me on the Shades of Entrepreneurship. Thank you for tuning in to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. For more information, please follow the Shades of E on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or visit theshadesofe.com. 